Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Defacto Review. Today is December 25th, so Merry Christmas to all of the uh, people celebrating in Mongolia and abroad. And as always, we have here with us de facto Jargal. Uh, good evening, Jargal. Hello. Uh, let's see what our topics are for tonight. Will Mongolia default in 2017? Development Bank of Mongolia urgently needs one trillion Turkic investment. Did the Dalai Lama visit Mongolia for the very last time? Our first topic is obviously the most pressing issue facing Mongolia today, uh, which is the economic crisis and the government's plan to recover uh, from this. Uh, the most pressing issue is the, um, the first sovereign bond Mongolia issued on the uh, international market, which is $580 million bonds uh, the Development Bank of Mongolia issued in 2012. And this will mature next year in March 21st. And there's a lot of questions, doubt uh, whether uh, DBM will be able to pay back these uh, uh, Mongolia's first sovereign bonds. Uh, since it's the first, it, it's uh, paying it back. It will be a major test of Mongolia's ability to uh, govern and uh, spend uh, these uh, commercial international uh, loans. Um, so there's a couple of uh, government um, uh, recovery uh, plans that um, the government is implementing, which is um, borrowing uh, soft loans from countries such as China, Kuwait, Japan, and Russia, countries uh, which uh, our foreign minister uh, visited and also the Speaker of Parliament has just visited the uh, Russia and uh, Arab states just last week. And the next um, uh, option is uh, taking the standby agreement from the International Monetary Fund, and the amount that Mongolia uh, might take is being uh, rumored to be between a, a billion and a billion and a half uh, dollars uh, of loans, of soft loans, in, uh, and the final, de the first decision might come in as early as January, and these, if uh, according to, goes to plan, we might uh, be able to take this money in, in, by spring. Um, the other big issue is, will Mongolia be able to move forward the major uh, projects, such as, in particular, Tavan Tolgoy uh, coking coal mine, and currently uh, the old consortium um, that won the tender is, being, is negotiating uh, a new deal with the government of Mongolia. Uh, the three parties in this consortium are uh, Mongolian Mining Corporation, uh, listed in Hong Kong, and from the Chinese side, the state-owned uh, China Xinhua Corporation, and from Japan, Sumitomo Corporation. Uh, the details of these negotiations are not clear yet, but the government gave a directive to Erdnes Tavan Tolgoy, which uh, holds the license to, these, to this coal mine that uh, ETT uh, must at least hold 51% of whatever uh, new deal might come out of these negotiations. Um, the other uh, option that was uh, recently uh, developed is uh, last week's uh, government cabinet meeting uh, decided to amend the current law on banks and uh, to make it able for foreign banks to open branches in Mongolia. Uh, the government cabinet resolution meeting memo said that currently four uh, international banks have sent requests to uh, open a branch in Mongolia. Obviously, one of them is uh, the state-owned uh, Bank of China. And the, the other one that's been mentioned is the German Deutsche Bank. Uh, the other one is a project that the government is proposing to move forward is the Gatsurt Gold Deposit. Uh, the government decided to move this forward a very long time ago, but it's being stalled due to a local court uh, contention. Um, so the government said that next year they'll be able to move these move this uh, major gold deposit 
forward. So my question to you, Jargal, is uh, how do you rate the current government's uh, economic recovery plan? And do you think they'll be able to implement these issues so that Mongolia will not default come March? None of them uh, that much will be implemented very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, nevertheless, we have to pay that debt on mm -hmm. bond in March. So there will be quite timing issue on that. Mm -hmm. That means we are to be ready for facing major austerity uh, mm -hmm. steps that the government must take. Mm -hmm. Either they take it from now in a planned way, mm -hmm. or they have to do it one day very mm -hmm. sharply, which may cause major, maybe instability, mm -hmm. big strike, etc. So we are to be ready for the sort of austerity measures, which should start from having saving all costs, having all cost unnecessary cut as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I don't think for a long run the government will be able, if the money situation is as is it now, it will not be able to continue borrowing from mm -hmm. domestic market. Mm -hmm. For from uh, international market, it's already not possible because mm -hmm. this country got more than it can uh, digest. And uh, <coughs> domestic market, they borrow, keep borrowing, and the commercial banks are buying only two, three, four, three months, six months government bonds with very high rate, mm -hmm. about 17 to 18 percent, mm -hmm. which is way higher than the commercial bank's loan. Right. So now uh, government should not sell, central bank should not allow Mongolian banks to buy it. Instead, the capital market better to buy yes. so that also individuals can buy, etc. This is the first thing. Second, I think we should uh, try to uh, use consumer uh, good goods cons produced in Mongolia, right. vegetables, whatever you can do it. And plus it's uh, also uh, food security mm -hmm. issues. And um, third is uh, we should be, we should understand the growing, we should, uh, we should feel the growing awareness of Chinese foreign policy today. Right. And it looks like we need to go to ask many things from Beijing, right. like we did before with Moscow. Right. So that's the situation, unfortunately, we're going to face in, uh, in the very short term, near future. Uh, <coughs> and as far as the banks concerned, um, I don't think the, these ba the four banks they requested to open an uh, office here, uh, a branch here, was uh, requested two, three years ago. Right. Now, it's a, I don't think it's the right time. Everybody will be jumping in now. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is so. And as far as Bank of China is concerned, this is a state-owned bank. Right. So when banks are owned by state, it is not just ordinary commercial bank. Mm -hmm. So that's the situation where we Mongolians should think over, again, can we do it without China? Can we, mm -hmm. can we survive without China? Etc. So a lot we need to be more creative, innovative. Maybe we create uh, some products that can we sell over over China and Russia, etc. So mm -hmm. it's a time of big challenges coming. So obviously, if if you were to borrow from China, uh, the one obvious thing that they will demand is allow Bank of China to be able to branch here. Probably just one of the many requirements that they will force us. Take. And the process with the state on the Xinhua right. coal company. Altogether, we are now dealing with a huge Chinese mm -hmm. commercial bank, huge Chinese corporation that is owned by state. Mm -hmm. So this is our reality. And we have to be very uh, creative here, not because under the, uh, I mean, we are in economic crisis. We have a very not good situation now. But it doesn't mean that we sell it everything so cheap. Right. So it is long-term, short-term balancing mm -hmm. issue. One of the ironic things is that uh, the same consortium uh, came into an agreement with the previous government, but the parliament shot it down, uh, citing uh, some concerns such as over uh, dependence on China. So the situation might have become even worse now. We are even more 
dependent on China and we are uh, losing any other options besides going to China for any kind of assistance. Nevertheless, I think this sort of solution, this sort of uh, agreement should go through the parliament. It should be approved by the parliament, mm -hmm. not like the Erdinet deal. Right. So recently, <clears throat> our government, Mongolian the leaders, they tend to do it without parliament, which mm -hmm. is the key for the democratic country. Right. So we do, we do expect that it will go through parliament, mm -hmm. through proper discussions, not unlike that. Remember the loan agreement with Chalko? Right. They were so much in a hurry that they made such a bad mm -hmm. price deal. Mm -hmm. And now still they said now they increased, uh, increased a little bit. Still it is six times less than the world market right. price. So really it shows that Mongolians are not very good, in particular government people, not good with uh, negotiating skills. Right. Um, so our next uh, topic is the Development Bank of Mongolia, which was created in early 2012, uh, during the time when the Mongolian People's Party were in power. Um, and they issued Mongolia's first um, sovereign bond, um, which was $580 million um, bond. And last week, uh, Parliament uh, plenary session had a heated uh, discussion over the situa financial situation of the Development Bank of Mongolia. And uh, the government requested the parliament to urgently inject uh, one trillion tugurk into the bank so that uh, the balance of uh, their own assets and the amount of loans that they gave out is more balanced. Uh, some of the, let me give you some of the um, statistics. Um, the, the DBM gave in the last five years 5.9 trillion tugurk of loans to around uh, 2,000 projects, uh, but the key concern now is the, uh, the ability of those uh, borrowers uh, to be paid back, to be able to pay back those loans. And according to the uh, parliament working group, a government working group who did an audit of the bank, 70% uh, of these loans are in, in danger of becoming non-performing loans. And uh, 50 out of all these loans, 54.6% or around 3.2 uh, trillion tugurks of those loans uh, must need to be uh, invested in 16 uh, projects uh, and the ability of those uh, borrowers is uh, quite uh, low. And uh, so in, th in this situation when uh, the development bank, you know, 70% of, of their loans are in danger of becoming non-performing loans, um, and the key criticism was that DBM uh, spent all these money outside of the budget without much government uh, oversight and now the, their asset uh, size is even close to the government's budget now. So how do you see the situation developing around DBM? And there's one uh, criticism is that um, DBM gave a lot of loans to companies related to politicians. And the criticism in last uh, week's uh, plenary session was, uh, this was from uh, an MPP, a uh, long-time uh, member of parliament, who criticized the government and parliament for being uh, awkwardly, uh, suspiciously silent on who actually uh, took out these loans. And his concern uh, point was that because you know, a lot of politicians from both big parties took out these loans, they're hesitant to be able to declare the, the actual borrowers. How do you see the situation really? As you said, half of the loan by development bank, which is around six billion, a tr a billion, a trillion two weeks, but mm -hmm. half of them, more than half of them are uh, to be paid back from the budget. Mm -hmm. So they have given to uh, companies, to, to, to projects that is to be paid at the end from the uh, mm -hmm. budget. So that's why for years we have been discussing that now we, we kind of have two budgets now in the country. So finally they have get together into one balance mm -hmm. and still it shows this whole this for our budget deficit is a huge deficit is coming because we have now finally united, which mm -hmm. was rightly so. Of course. But um, out of this uh, seven total trillion two weeks asset of this bank, uh, about six, as we have seen, is given to the loan. Uh, less than uh, 
now need they need at least one billion to ex to increase the quality of the on on, honors pr uh, equity, mm -hmm. and uh, currently this honors equity, just honors equity itself, is two hundred fifty billion mm -hmm. tugriks, which they ask to increase four times so that they have the threshold of uh, mm -hmm. one billion uh, one trillion tugriks so that they can uh, leverage on on that to right. probably all the way to the ten. Now, you know, th this development bank should be. Uh, under the uh, law of banking in Mongolia, right. and our that law shows when you have a bad loan, qualified like this, which is not paid, say more than six months, nothing is paid back. Then they are qualified in that way, and then they they create a risk fund reserve, risk reserve. Whether it is done or not, the mm -hmm. inspection group did not say. If they did not, then question is why. Because it is paid by the budget later on will be paid. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that it's so it has a, such a, a guarantee. Mm -hmm. Another concern is about this two thousand projects we talk to talk yeah. about. And they were Sounds they, too many. They went in three ways. First went to straight from the development bank to uh, larger several groups. For example, uh, the total one point four four trillion two weeks were given directly to uh, railways, 15, uh, all the industry related to the power, mm -hmm. heating, 22, the pr uh, manufacturing, 446 mm -hmm. trillion tugriks were given. Uh, it's billion tugriks were right. given to uh, five companies. Mm -hmm. And there are two cement factories, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. The particular names can be companies. And the, the problem is also in this country, all smaller, big, somehow related to the politicians. Right. <laughs> and in particular, when it's bluntly related, and if they made a, a certain contribution towards making decisions, right. they had the impact on making final decisions, bank that uh, bank loan officers, uh, then departments, that's the concern. And we don't know who and how it is made. Mm -hmm. So that's why the parliament members are not happy, mm -hmm. of course, and uh, many of them are related to these companies, of course. Mm -hmm. The other 1.2 trillion two weeks were given by, through the banks. Out of 14 commercial banks in the country, right. eight of them uh, were taking the loans. But the 30% of all loans through these commercial banks mm -hmm. went to, through Qalumt Bank mm -hmm. for 340 uh, billion and Trade and Development Bank, 28%. Mm -hmm. So these two banks together, almost 60% of the loans went through these banks. Right. Remember that these banks, these loans are for short, long term, from eight to, from seven to eight percent, whether it is two Greek right. or dollar, right. the same because it is this, it, the cost was less. Mm -hmm. The third one was um, through the many projects like Olambata cities, streets, roads in the country. For roads, one point two uh, trillion two weeks were loan was given, mm -hmm. and out of them two-third went to the countryside right. between cities. Uh, IMAX, uh, the road went on. And then uh, one-third went to the uh, capital city. Mm -hmm. And plus there are several projects, as you know, street projects. Right. They made nice, the crossroads. Right. I mean, et cetera, et cetera. Many, uh, 2.7 uh, trillion tourists were used for that purpose. Uh, and very strange thing is, for example, for railroad, right. New railroad, they said, 347 billion to weeks a loan was given, and non single kilometer mm -hmm. of road is made yet. Right. And yet, this money had disappeared. Mm -hmm. So, Mongolia, what Mongolia is doing is, a country like Mongolia could do, could borrow more development loans, which is 2-3% for 40-50 right. years of maturity. And this is the things they should use. But however, because our uh, bad governance, because this possibility for many companies to get uh, public money through less scrutiny, et cetera, et cetera, today 70% of the total loan of the development bank is of bad quality, mm -hmm. which is a very, very dangerous, bad situation. And now at the end, who is paying? Everybody is paying. Yes. And this paying is, is more, uh, payment is coming very hard for uh, lower income people mm -hmm. through tax, through the increase of prices, so we are going through, going through this year, uh, next year, early next year, 
several severe economic financial situation. Mm -hmm. And since this, since this is uh, the first sovereign bond Mongolia ever issued, it's very uh, important in the eyes of investors of, of the ability of the Mongolian government to be able to pay back these uh, loans on time. Um, the, you know, but we let's can always be realistic. Without finding other debt, the government cannot pay. Mm -hmm. It's unrealistic that we, in three months, we pay 580 million US dollar. Right. It's impossible. So now they go for other loans, for, as you have mentioned, several sources. But the issue is, unless we change the way the government is run, mm -hmm. then no, no matter how much we receive more money as a debt, it doesn't help Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So a lot of um, decisions need to be made, agreements need to be made in the next three months for Mongolia to be able to pay back its first ever sovereign bond. Our next issue is, uh, is a hot topic, yeah, not just in Mongolia, but also in the international diplomacy scene. Uh, this is related to the Dalai Lama's recent visit to Mongolia and the subsequent uh, action measures that the Chinese government has taken. Uh, the obvious uh, uh, explicit ones are Chinese side uh, postponed several trilateral um, meetings between Mongolia and China indefinitely. Uh, included in these negotiations were a, a soft loan in the amount of uh, $4.2 billion, which is now indefinitely postponed. Uh, one interesting thing is that um, the, you know, uh, the Chinese uh, foreign ministry spokesperson initially said Mongolia is acting very naive when it comes to diplomacy. We should learn from our mistakes and take actions to uh, rectify our mistakes. Uh, it, perhaps in, in, uh, in response to that, our foreign minister, Mr. Muk Orgel, recently gave an interview to a local newspaper saying that the Mongolian government regrets uh, that the Dalai Lama visited and the, and the uh, subsequent uh, events that happened. And, pro and a lot of uh, international media has covered uh, his next uh, comment, which was that the current government, as a policy, will not invite Dalai Lama or actually al allow him to enter whether it's for religious, even for religious purposes. And um, uh, after this, the Chinese uh, MFA also not, made another statement that uh, Mongolia must learn from these mistakes and uh, um, <laughs> do everything it can to improve the uh, standing between the two countries. So one interesting, uh, for me, uh, one of the recent criticism of the situation is that uh, questions question marks is that did the government actually know and willingly allow him to enter or uh, agents within the government secretly allowed him to enter and obviously there was they're blaming one person behind uh, the second option which is they're blaming the president for meddling in the affairs of government um, according to our constitution our diplomatic uh, international affairs are handled divided between the government and the president, and uh, you know, we, since the government and the president are from two different parties, uh, the cohesiveness of Mongolia's diplomatic stance is being is, is coming into question. And one interesting thing is that uh, the Dalai, current Dalai Lama, uh, in the last couple of years, I think I believe he said that uh, there might not be a fifteenth Dalai Lama, and um, uh, and his age is also. Is uh, is an aging person? I think he's believed in his seventies. So, in the case that there won't be a next Dalai Lama, there's a question whether this was the last Dalai Lama's last visit to Mongolia. How do you see, see the situation? Well, Dalai Lama is now eighty-three years old mm. and uh, quite senior person. Uh, but you know, my thought is, it's uh, it's becoming increasingly difficult of our relations with China. China is imposing more conditions and terms. And now I have a domestic uh, questions for our president. And mm -hmm. I, in fact, I ask the <coughs> president to go out and explain to the public. Because we don't see that uh, it is just a matter of 
individual action by one a council at our embassy in Tokyo, mm -hmm. which was I was the w there was a news that he was a fire. Right, but it is not that easy mm -hmm. issue. It shows Mongolian uh, uh, anti-corruption agency, police, intelligence agency, intelligence uh, intelligence agency, right? right. The third court, these four major uh, power agencies mm -hmm. are very much divided. They right. are not united. Mm -hmm. And it's big concern at this time of hardship, difficulties, if this all forces, institution, force institutions are divided, mm -hmm. then it is, it is not good, not at all. So our present is to, I think, uh, to uh, make clear that suspicion that right. uh, he is behind the visit of Dalai Lama to the country. And he, if he is, then she, she should tell why and why not. Right. Um, so that's a big uh, concern. And it shows, if it is the case, that the president is doing different than the government. Right. Just, it just like so much against each other. Then uh, an issue comes whether Mongolia is also in a political crisis or not, right. along with this mm -hmm. economic crisis we face. If Division it of is, power issue. If it is when the, now the default or the sort of hard times comes, we're going to face even worse situation because there will not be single unified actions right. in the country. But nevertheless, Mongolia should go ahead and Mongolia also should be very smart with the negotiations with China on this Taban Talga issues. Right. We should not be in a hurry making decisions like last time, remember, this Chalko made this uh, contract. So right. all these things... $350 million yeah. prepayment. Yeah, yeah. so uh, we need to be m even now more smarter and more united, more clear, and everything, every sort of decisions are to be made through Parliament. Mm -hmm. At the end, it's legally elected people to represent whole Mongolia. Right. Only the parliament has this mm -hmm. representation power. Mm -hmm. so. And it's important to note that uh, uh, ironic that the, uh, uh, the first Tabun Tolga deal was shut down because of criticism over Chinese uh, over, uh, over increasing their influence and, uh, and uh, the new negotiations happening with the same consortium at the same time. The other concern among Mongolian ordinary people is the information that China had made in a law that says that justifies military intervention mm -hmm. when they found Chinese interests are attacked right. in us and other sovereign countries. Mm -hmm. So if it is true, and it is a question for Chinese speaking people to find out the law that if, I mean, if Chinese interests are somewhere say, first of all, in Mongolia, mm -hmm. then somehow there is something happening with the businesses, and they can interpret it in uh, different ways. It, it can be because it's state-owned, in this case it is state uh, ownership, state right. interests is damaged or attacked, so they can... This is an issue that we make very... we, we should make clear. Mm -hmm. All right, unfortunately we ran out of time for today, and uh, I want to thank our viewers for tuning in to 2016's uh, last edition of the Factory Review, and we want to uh, wish everyone uh, watching uh, today a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. Merry and Christmas. Thank you, Charles, Happy for New Year. Your... Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you, could, you could watch us, uh, you were able to watch us live on uh, Facebook as well. Uh, v Television is the name of the page, and uh, please give your comments and suggestions for our, to, uh, for our next editions. So that's it. Uh, good night, everyone, and a happy new year. Bye.